turn left onto University Drive. In 1,000 feet, your destination will be on the left. On the campus of the University of Maine, right behind the Student Center, we have the Holocaust and Human Rights Center of Maine. So come along with me and see what we find inside in Augusta, Maine. Now you do park at the Student Center and it is handicapped accessible, handicapped parking. You just have to go up a slight grade. So maybe wheeling yourself up in a wheelchair might not be so easy, <laughs> but having somebody uh, push you up, that would do it. Now because it is run by State University, it is free of charge. And when you first walk in, up here, there is a little 10 minute movie. And in order to look at that, you go to the uh, desk and whoever is manning the desk at the time, you can just ask them to run that video. It is very, very interesting. And this is the life of Mr. Claire. And you can see bullet holes and a lot of those pictures and that's the billfold and right behind the billfold you can see a picture of uh, Mr. Clare's father who was murdered by the Nazis so the bullet went through the billfold all through the pictures and that's what uh, killed him and testimonials on the wall of different survivors is an interactive touch screens. Now there's also a large theater that has about an hour and a half presentation that they do ask you to reserve ahead of time for larger groups. But when nobody's here watching the movies, you get to see bits and pieces of that movie on the wall these are people who have been interviewed for the movie and of course you see the person's picture and a little bit of a description about them now oddly enough we actually missed this person by a couple days mr rotmill he was actually here at the university uh, doing a talk and there's much more of that type of thing all along the auditorium. And there's a lot of wonderful photographic art of the Holocaust, or I should say about the Holocaust and related to it, of Poland and Czechoslovakia by Judith Ellis Glickman. And there's also some sculpture and artistic pieces that relate to the Holocaust and uh, rights, human rights. We were lucky enough this day to have the actual curator show us around and we got this talking and he even took us to the back and showed us some things that they have in their private collection in the back that some of the things haven't even been archived yet. I didn't have the camera running the whole time. Get a load of this. One of the, uh, nope, area. I got it. Oh. A lot of the. Do you want to film it? Bearing this is just a Nazi in our bands. You said the Hitler Youth Dagger. Yep. Oh, wow. This is just an interesting book. 
a Polish acts of atrocity against the German minority in Poland. So something that they would have been. This is some of the propaganda that yeah, yep. they used to justify the invasion. Interesting piece. This is a, a victim of fascism card. So oh. this would have been used by somebody to um, help immigrate out of the country. Oh, and okay. This was a Jewish star that they had worn. You don't get to see archives much at all. I believe it's a work. Oh. So this would have been by somebody in the occupied territories. Okay. Um, and would have allowed them to work. I believe he worked in a tank factory. This is a. If I'm not remembering correctly, I believe this is a, a document that would have been used for people to identify their lineage as uh, proving that they were Aryan. Oh, okay. So, would everybody need a book like that? I think, um, I believe it was just people whose identity was in question, but I think at some point they did require many people to prove that. Uh, but I don't know if, if everyone was required by law to do so. Really interesting um, piece of propaganda, Germany and the Jewish problem. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. I mean, seriously, so much.